Now for the final part, the middle. Again, create another cube. And let's get it in the center. Okay, and the height, 838, and the width, 431. Let's do a little tidying up over here. So the outer ring, the screen, and the button, and logo, that is all in the front. and the screws and the back are all in the back so move this in between them and let's start modeling the middle press C to make it editable okay and we're gonna do the same thing we did with the middle knife down the center, press shift when I, while you have loop mode on, press 50% for the offset and knife it, then select, do loop selection and again bevel it, make sure it's actually set to linear and the subdivision is 1 and we can actually get the exact positions for those from the back Alright, looks like we're going to have to model and then find the back. So, select the, these points, these edges right here. Again, switch to the top viewport in the perspective. Move them out. And just scale them until is relatively correct. Remember we beveled the edges so get it in the center of the bevel and then bevel these edges. Okay, let's hide the back for a second. Let's turn fog ankles down. 60 should actually... Okay, 60 degrees should be fine. Okay, let's not j round the edges just yet. First we want to see what we're going to do. So, let's look at some reference images. If you look at the bottom, it's actually split into three parts. You've got the left side, then the bottom, and then the right side. The, the uh, sides are actually also moved in a little bit. You can actually see it a little bit better over here. And there's a button on the side. The top, although we don't have a view, also has a little button at the top. 
So we can model that and then here's what I'm thinking we can do. We can model that and then bool out the sides to create two different objects. One with just the sides and one with just the middle which has the rubber and the button and the headphone jack and port. So let's do that. So for the back we don't actually need this anymore. So switch to the left viewport over here. Go to mode, view settings, and change it to the left reference image and change the height to 839. Okay. Fits perfectly. Take our cube and let's switch to polygon modeling. Okay, so we need to figure out where we're going to put our cuts so we can move this edge from here to here in. Let's start on the right side. Select the knife tool. Loop. Knife over there. Knife those edges knife these edges and knife these edges. Okay, left side. Knife these edges, these edges, and looks like we're done. So on the right side, Select these edges right here. And on the left side, make sure you're holding down shift. Select these edges. Okay. And go to mute mode view settings. Hmm, seems like it's a little off. Okay. So once you have those edges selected, all you have to do is press T and we can start to scale them in. But really I want to look at the reference image first. Okay. We can see that it's not extremely pushed in. Just a little bit. So that should be enough. Okay, that's fine. Oops, we seem to have selected the wrong edges. Looks like we're going to have to flip the reference image. I knew it was off. So, deselect the key back aspect ratio and make this negative. Okay, much better. Now select, deselect that actually. Select these edge, th that, that polygon face and these polygon faces. And now let's scale them in. And we could do with turning the fog angle down. There we go. That is perfect. 
Okay, we actually need to move some more polygons back. These polygons right here to make space for our button. We'll switch to the front viewport. And move them back. Let's make another cut, actually. Switch to plan. XZ. OK. Just so we can move these points back. And now we can move them back. Okay, looking good. We need to make just enough space to fit our button in, which will be an extrude nerves. Periodically, if you get shading issues, you can either try fixing it manually with edges, but it doesn't seem to be points or edges overlapping. Or you can just turn the fog angle down. Okay, 56. Let's see how it looks with the back, back up. Looking pretty good. We still need to do the little rubber butt, little rubber that's on the back over here. Okay. And these points, these edges could actually do with some beveling. So select these edges on this side. And these edges. On the other side. and just really slightly bevel them. Just to create a hard edge. Okay. Now we can just go ahead and round our edges because we're about to bool out the sides. So select the cube, top edges, outside edges I mean. Okay. Let's switch to the front viewport. And again, let's bevel. Convex. I believe it was 22 subdivision that we did on. And change the radius until it fits. And it works out 
nicely. We're getting a bit of a problem over here. Oh, I see. Okay. We actually had some extra points selected. Okay, bevel. Okay. Now it looks much better. Let's compare that edge to... And it's following it almost perfectly. It's a little off because the reference in images aren't perfectly centered by a couple pixels. Maybe two. Let's look at it with the back up okay it seems we have some overlapping edge Yes, we do. Select the point tool and slide this. Okay, problem fixed. Just examine all the edges. Another problem at the bottom. Slide this. Up, there we go. Okay, all problems fixed over there. We're trying to get the mesh as clean as possible before we blow out these sides. Okay, now let's look at some reference images. Actually, I want to go into the front to go to the screen. Black and let's just make it zero, seeing as it's perfectly flat. That way we get the best shading possible. Okay, reference images. See some bottom? Okay. It goes just about until the edge. So create a Q. Make sure it has a larger Z value than the um, back. And... That's about where it is. And that's about where it is. Okay. And just take the back. Name this middle inner go to the bool and instead of a subtract b we're going to do a intersect b drag those in make sure this is editable uh 
hide that and there we go okay now duplicate this we can go ahead and delete this a subtract B again but this time take the cube and we're gonna create a little bit of an edge just scale it down go to the top viewport and scale it down just a little bit scale it up just a little bit excuse me just to get an edge is this on the back Okay. Just trying to get it perfect. Okay, perfect. And now let's model out our button for the side. So, again, just a little bit of cleaning up. Put both of these in a null object. Name that null object middle. This is the sides, and this is the middle inner. Okay. Okay, hide the back and might as well hide the front as well. Go to the front viewport. And let's create a spline. Rectangular. Move it up. Scale it down. Okay, let's move it up to the center. And individually we can move these points up. Let's move these points in. Okay, now let's move this up. Move these points down. And this last one down. Make sure keep that point selected. And let's bevel. Chamfer. Excuse me. Doesn't have to be a huge chamfer. It's looking fine. We have here on the back.
There we go. Okay, let's extrude. negative 20 and there's our button but also on the side there are five little I guess you could call them frosted plastic they don't really light up at least not on the one that I was holding up but it's a nice detail to have and we're also going to model those on we could build them out but starting to not like working with bulls inside of Cinema 4D. Let's make it a cylinder. Move the radius down. Functions, duplicate, linear. Generate instances and one, two, three, four, four copies. Apply and bring the bring them down on Y. There we go. Let's move them out. Height of point 0.2 should work. Let's move them onto the edge. And then center them. Okay, there we go. Let's name all of this button and we'll make that part of the middle. Okay, we're almost done with the model. Let's look at what we've got so far. It's looking pretty good. We need to do the the button on the back the headphone jacks and port and the button on the top. Let's do this first. Switch this back to a back view port. Go to mode, view settings, back, keep aspect ratio, um, 839. And we also have to do the Zoom logo. Okay. So, let's do this. Create a rectangular spline. Move it down.
also scale it down height wise we want it to be snug but with just a little bit of room for a shadow Okay, select those two points. Actually, yeah, select those two points. Move them in. And chamfer them. Okay, fits perfectly. Now let's extrude it. Oops, move the whole spline. Don't need to actually extrude it that much. Add a little bit of fillet, constrain again, radius of one, two steps, and there we go. Alright, we need to add the zoom logo. So again, open up the zoom illustrator file. This time, delete every single path except this one. Cut and paste it into our scene. Okay. Extrude it. And move it in. Not extremely. Back rubber. Put that in the back. You can actually just put the screw bu bu bulls in a null object. Name that screws and logo. and just move the logo in.
Okay. So now the bottom. Actually, we can just, for now, we can do the top really quickly and then we can do the bottom. So to do that, we actually need to make our bool editable. So press C, or if you want, again, control and put it in our storage just in case we make a mistake. Select all of these, all of this inside the middle inner null object, connect them all. Again, right click, optimize, just in case. Okay. Let's hide the back for now. And add some knife. On the YZ plane. Selection, loop. Three point two six negative thirty five point six four I'm just gonna copy this paste it make it negative okay scale them down The button is not that big. Let's see if I can find it on a reference image. No, we do not have it on a reference image. Okay. So to model the button, all we have to do is extrude inner really slightly. down, trying to create a edge and then extrude inner again extremely slightly, extrude, just keep the settings but make the offset the inverse and then bevel. Type linear subdivision zero, extrusion and just create a little button at the top and we're going to create our selection tag ahead of time just so we don't have to do it when we're making our material when we're applying our material so once you select these points just just use a uh, loop selection it's really easy select these points these these faces these faces and these fa this face Go to Selection, Set Selection, Button. It's going to be using a different material than the rubber that we're going to be using for the for the top. Okay. Okay, for the port, we actually can use just this right here, extrude inner again. Let's look at it. Scale it down. Let's find a, a reference image just to get the scale right. Okay. And extrude upwards. 
Now let's look at the inside of the port. Okay, so we've got a piece that comes out, a bottom piece right around here, and it most likely has metal hinges that looks like maybe one, two, we'll say four, we'll say five just to make it even. I mean just to make enough space to fill up the port. So once we have that, we can knife loop select the point that was made the face that was made and extrude them out to create the five metal hinges go into this viewport create a rectangle let's just work at this scale for now go into point mode delete this point and unselect close spline move this point in Select this point and chamfer it. Maybe move this point in and create our outline. And it will automatically close the port. Okay, switch to perspective. We need to actually flip this. It's actually Get the axis right, okay. Object axis. Rotate it 180 degrees, scale it down a lot. And let's position it. move this edge in, select all the edges, okay Let's extrude it. On the x-axis, move it down. Alright, function, duplicate, linear, and make sure it's on the x-axis, apply, oops, okay, we want to do it on the entire extrude nerves, apply, and 
Let's add some more. And just center it. And that will be the basis for our port. Okay, one more thing, and then we are done with the modeling portion. We just have to do the headphone jack. So, switch to the bottom viewport. Select middle inner. Select this polygon right here. And extrude inner. And I actually want to use a because we're going to be making a circle out of points, so select a disk. Let's position about where we want it. Move it down. And let's use 12 points. Turn the radius down. Let's see what it actually looks like. Alright, it's a little bit bigger than that. Alright, and then go to basic. Use color, always. Do something nice and bright so we can see the points. Okay, start positioning your points. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four points right now. So select the Add Points tool, and we're going to add eight points one two three four one two three four and now we can just position them Back to our perspective view Selection. Let's select these points right here and let's bevel them. Move these points up. And just like we did with the top, let's just make our selection tag now for when we're actually applying the material. Headphones. Oops, never fix the top. Close polygon hole. There we go. Easy to fix.
Okay, and that is it for the modeling portion. We modeled a Zune HD from Microsoft, and in the next part of the tutorial, we're going to be texturing it using so a whole bunch of different materials. There's going to be rubber, metal, some glass, and you'll also see why we made the screen in extrude NURBS and why it's instead of two separate objects for the screen like people usually do with glass over a single plane we're gonna use it we're gonna do it in a single material okay I'm Antti Khan and I'll see you in the next tutorial I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something new